What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, again, uh, this channel brings the Mark Berman. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel, bro. Thanks so much, Victor. I appreciate the invitation again. It's been a while. Oh, I miss you in this channel. I talk with you in backstage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been trying to learn Portuguese, but I'm just not up to snuff yet. I will teach. I will teach <laughs> Portuguese for you, okay? <laughs> I'm better uh, in Espanol. My my English it's better. <laughs> Espanol um poquito. Espanol um poquito. <laughs> First of all, Berman, first of all, uh, I want to talk with you about uh, the biggest rumor, né? the biggest rumor from the Knicks in the season, in this off season. And uh, I want your opinion on the Donovan Mitchell deal going wrong. Did Leon Rose uh, do the, thing, uh, the right thing? Yeah, Victor, I, I'm disappointed that they didn't get this deal done. I think Leon, po uh, Leon Rose was playing poker with Danny Ainge, and in the end, uh, Leon went bust. I think that he didn't make his best offer, uh, and he was waiting and waiting, and by the time he was ready to make his best offer, Danny Ainge had moved on to Cleveland. Once Cleveland was willing to give three unprotected first-round picks, the Knicks were essentially out of the ball game, and they couldn't sneak back in, and Leon couldn't make what I believe was a better offer than he had made previously. So I think Leon thought he was bidding against himself. Danny had told him he had a couple of other teams involved. I no, don't think the Knicks thought the other teams were as serious. So I think Leon misplayed his hand. And now the Knicks, unless Donovan Mitchell in two years wants, wants out of Ohio, I think that uh, it's, it's a disappointing end result for the Knicks. Uh, it's complicated. Uh, Spider-Man 4, don't come in to the Knicks. That's the bottom line. You can make all the excuses you want. I know fans were, some were happy, some were upset. The fans think it's wise that they kept their draft picks, but Tom Thibodeau doesn't even like their draft. Tom Thibodeau is not a big uh, proponent of the draft. He thinks it's very risky. And as a result, they essentially sacrificed the 11th pick in the draft for Jalen Brunson. They traded the 11th mm -hmm. pick in order to clear enough cap space to sign Jalen. So that's how much the Knicks care about the draft. Mm. And uh, I, I won't talk with you about Jalen Brunson, Isaiah Hartenstein. Uh, what's your expectations now, uh, about these players? Well, both are very uh, good fits and filled a big need. I mean, we've talked a lot about Jalen, of course, filling a big need at point guard, but Isaiah Hardenstein also fills a big need of a backup center who can actually play some offense. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no worse offensive players in the NBA than uh, Nerlens Noel and then Jericho Sims. I mean, the Listen, Jericho can finish at the rim, but neither could shoot the ball at all. I mean, you had three centers in Mitchell Robinson, Noel, and Jericho, who and Taj Gibson, you know, just poor shooters. Not so much Taj, but the other three were are the worst shooters in the league. So Isaiah can shoot from mid-range. He could hit an open three. Defensively, he's a good rebounder. He could protect the rim well enough, not as good as Noel, but Noel couldn't even get on the court. Listen, the people around the league think it was a good move because you can't bank on Noel to be healthy. His whole career he's been injured. 
So they got rid of Noel and they have Hardenstein. It's a nice upgrade. Jalen, I mean, it's been talked about so much, but boy, did they need a playmaker on that roster. They had no playmaker. You know, you could talk about Jalen's scoring ability, especially in the playoffs, but he's really a old school point guard who likes setting up people. And he had that role in Dallas during the playoffs where he had to be a scorer, but he's as much a facilitator as anything. And there's very few of that in the league. So Jalen fits in well. He's going to set up RJ. He'll set up Mitchell Robinson. He'll set up Julius. You know, he he's going to score also. So it's a great fit, great leader. They needed a leader. They had no leaders last season. Julius Randle is not a leader. And the other big thing, when you talk to people around the league, uh, it allows Derek Rose not to be depended upon so much. He could play his 15 to 20 minutes a night. He doesn't have to play every night. Uh, and he doesn't, and maybe you put Miles McBride in there to give Derek a breather. I mean, listen, Derek Rose has had a ton of injuries. There's no guarantee uh, about his health. So Jalen Brunson, just a terrific maneuver. And I think it's going to help them get back into not the playoffs for sure, but the play in tournament uh, featuring the seventh through 10th seeds. I think the Knicks could be eight or nine when I look at the uh, on paper. Me too. Me too. I I think the same. I think the same. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I I I won't make two questions and one question for you. Okay. Uh, the first, um, what's your opinion about uh, the Barrett extension? Nah? And uh, I won't talk with you. Nah? What do you think? about the Knicks not inviting the media to Barrett's interview. Well, your English is getting better and better, asking these tough questions. Uh, in <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, RJ's contract extension uh, is, is a decent deal for the Knicks, from the Knicks standpoint. I know their first priority was to include him in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. They're still unsure of RJ's potential as an all-star. He's got weaknesses to his game. He's got to get better from the three-point line. I'm told they're also concerned about his free-throw shooting because he's going to get to the free-throw line a lot because of the way he plays, the way he barrels to the basket. He's going to draw a lot of fouls, and he has drawn a lot of fouls, and he's not a great free-throw shooter. He's got to also improve his right hand. So – He's not always going to one side where they double team him. And he's got to improve his distribution when he gets doubled and triple teamed. Tom Thibodeau talked about this. He's got to have that instinctive nature to pass the ball out to the wing before he's swarmed. Because sometimes he, it's too late. He tries to pass it and it gets it, it becomes a turnover or he forces some wild shot. So mm -hmm. there are things to improve, but there's so much to like about his grit, his toughness, his durability. He loves New York. A bad game is not going to shake him. He's as confident a player as I've ever uh, encumbered. Uh, but is he an all-star? And you're paying him close to it. But listen, the deal is not $120 million. It's really $107 million. And then there's $13 million worth of incentives, which he may not even reach. Uh, mm -hmm. All-star berths, all-NBA, all-defensive teams. So it's not a terrible deal at all. But the fact is, the Knicks wanted to deal him for Donovan Mitchell and just could mm -hmm. not get it done. Uh, they they yes. weren't willing to give enough first-round picks and RJ. I think they realized the backlash from the fans that they gave up, say, five first-round picks You know, mm -hmm. a couple of conditional picks and three unprotected with RJ and say even Emmanuel. I think the fans would have been upset. RJ is a very popular player here in New York City. Yeah, with me too. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot of fans. He's a yes. good guy. Mm -hmm. I, man, He's got I, a I believe. In Brazil. 
Yes, I believe in this guy. You know, you know, uh, 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 people uh, who don't like Barrett. Uh, when I talk about Barrett, it's complicated because I like so much this guy. I believe yeah. so much. You're a big fan in yeah. in, in, in uh, R.J. Barrett. He's so, got a lot of detractors. He's yeah, got a lot of detractors. But uh, your second question, I actually didn't answer. And it's not because I'm afraid to answer it. I just forgot. It's a disgrace what the Knicks uh, public relations and organization are doing and alienating alien, alienating the media. Uh, I don't understand it. I know it comes right from the top, James Dolan. I don't understand the strategy. They need the media to send out their message in a positive way. When you alienate the media... Sometimes the media won't give you the benefit of the doubt. And if the Knicks start off early in a bad way, look out, baby. Look out. Uh, uh, first of all, we, uh, with Jalen Brunson, uh, we, first of all, Knicks don't invite in the media with uh, Jalen Brunson uh, interview with the Knicks. Nah? Uh, the second, uh, Barrett, no. Nah? Barrett don't no, don't don't invite him to nah, the media. Uh, it's complicated. It's complicated. Yeah. In my opinion, I I don't agree with this. I don't yeah. agree. Media, it's very important uh, fr from from the Knicks. Nah, uh, but it's my opinion. Nah. Yeah. I, I well, don't I don't agree. I don't know if you watch the streaming uh, version of the RJ. Monica McNutt uh, interview, but it was I, rather I saw, dull. I saw. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of nice moments, and, and Monica had a good line. He was wearing a green suit, and she called it his money suit. Uh, so there, it had its moments, but, you know, there weren't a lot of compelling questions, and I thought it was a little flat. And RJ just didn't seem as excited as I thought he'd be, considering the occasion. And I think even mm -hmm. the players realize, like, why isn't the media here? I mean, uh, like, what are we afraid of? RJ is afraid of nobody. And RJ has yes. taken me on, on camera, off camera. We've had our back and forths where you guys don't even, you know, you don't see it on, uh, on the Zoom, but, you know, at practices and such. But RJ is afraid of nobody. He'll answer any question. But Monica McNutt, has a script and Monica is going to ask the softball questions. And mm -hmm. the question that RJ should have been asked is there was a lot of reports in the media that the mm -hmm. Knicks were trying to trade you for Donovan Mitchell. I was wondering how you were reacting to that. And it was, it was it a distraction for you as you did your workouts? That question never came close to being asked. Um. Uh, I think I think the same about uh, the, your opinion in this subject. Uh, I, 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 I I think the same. No. and uh, yeah. I some fans don't care. Some fans think the media is the enemy, and we're just trying mm. to stir trouble. Uh, it's complicated. It's complicated, Bernard. Yeah. Um, I won't uh, talk with you uh, about the rumors, uh, Mark. Um, in Brazil, I I I heard about uh, so uh, so many rumors. Okay, uh, after na, la later uh, Donovan Mitchell, I I heard in Brazil about um, Caris Lever trade uh, for Evan Fournier, for example. Uh, this rumor, yeah. I I heard. Um, Bogdanovich, nah, rumors. Um, and I hear too about uh, the rumor in involving uh, Julius Randle, uh, Joe Gambaro, John Gambadoro from Arizona, for, from Arizona, ra Radio uh, Arizona, uh, talking about uh, the Phoenix Suns, nah, uh, interesting uh, in Julius Randle. Uh, what do you think about these rumors or any rumors? And uh, 
I won't make the, 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 the in this question. Um, do you believe the team is closed for the season or can be a chance, a uh, new rumor with the Knicks? Yeah, there's a chance. Listen, I spoke to a personnel man a few days ago. He said everyone on the Knicks is up for sale, essentially. Uh, Evan, mm -hmm. especially. Julius, as well. I mean, RJ now becomes a complicated deal because of the way the contract extension counts against the salary cap in a different way now. So it's very hard to trade them. Uh, but in terms of Evan and Julius, yes, especially Evan. Uh, it's almost when you look at the rotation, it's mm -hmm. like, I guess you want to start him, but I don't think he's going to play heavy minutes this year. Uh, I think they're going to try to play Grimes even more minutes because Thibodeau believes in his defense. Yes. So all these players, like Lavert is a good two-way player. Uh, he's been uh, in New York before and handled it beautifully, although playing for the Nets is different than playing for the Knicks. But it makes a lot of sense uh, for the Knicks to try to get a Lavert on the roster. I think we heard his name at the trade deadline or so. Uh, the, regarding Phoenix, did you say – you didn't say Devin Booker, did you? No, uh, I hear – Yeah, it, no. that's possible. Uh, I've heard even the Lakers, you know uh, – listen, the Knicks and Lakers talked about the Lakers being a third team in that mm -hmm. Donovan deal. So, uh, you know, Julius is a strong talent, and he still has a place in L.A., and, you know, they they basically gave up on Julius because LeBron was coming. And mm -hmm. it didn't make a – but right now, the, listen, I'm told the Lakers are desperate. So mm -hmm. a Julius move may smack of desperation, but it wouldn't shock me if something happens. Uh, I think the Knicks, regarding Julius, w feel it's a little awkward with Julius and Obi Toppin together. And I think they believe in Obi enough where they can make that move to Julius. Maybe mm -hmm. you start the season and see what Julius looks like. He looks like he's in great shape like two years ago. And if that's the case, maybe we're on to something. But mm -hmm. the Knicks are definitely open for business. Obviously, just because they did, didn't get Donovan doesn't mean they still want to make a move. They want to make another move. And, and do you believe in, in these rumors, Le, uh, Lever, or Bogdanovich, or no, in your opinion? Yeah, no, Levert is a player they like, and Bogey is a great outside shooter. They still, you know, he could defend better than Evan. The problem with Evan, he could, he's a little streaky for sure, but he could mm -hmm. knock down that three-point shot. But on defense, he's a liability. And, you know, with Tom yes. Thibodeau, you earn your minutes on your how much he trusts you on defense. So yes. Evan and, and Julius are going to be – they're going to look around right up until, again, the trade deadline. But, again, this – I think the Knicks would also like to see Julius improve his trade value. And the only way, way you could do that is if you get to camp and he looks great in preseason and maybe even at the start of the season. So uh, it's tough to make a trade two weeks before training camp, but – you know, with the Knicks, they still seem like they're unfinished. Yes. And uh, the last question, Berman. Uh, what do you think about the, the, these younger players in Knicks? Uh, Kenton Grimes, Obi Toppin, uh, Emmanuel Kikley, Mac Bright. Uh, what do you think about these players? Uh, Tom Chimbodon. Uh, has a chance uh give more minutes uh from these guys i make the question uh, for example for De dexter henry about uh Quentin grimes uh, can be a starter nah? uh dexter henry uh give my uh, give your opinion uh evan fournier don't don't leave the knicks uh evan fournier continues nah? continue uh, starter and, and Grimes uh, more minutes. Nah. In your opinion, uh, Kenton Grimes can't be a starter 
uh, Evan Fournier continue continue em Knicks, ok? Yeah. Grimes has has a chance or no, né? Uh, or not, in your opinion? And what's your opinion about these younger players? Obi Toppin, in your in your opinion, uh, yeah. has a chance of more minutes. And uh, I want your opinion about the younger players from the Knicks. Yeah, yeah. The the question about Evan starting or not starting, I think, as I said before, I think he's not going to play starters minutes. But I think eventually he'll start. I think it's. I think Tom is big into the chemistry, and Evan on the second unit, uh, where they really want to run with Obi and quickly, and even Derek Rose uh, leading the charge. I'm not sure Evan is that type of fast-paced, uh, fast-break player. So in terms of the chemistry, I think Evan might look better on the starting unit. Quentin looks uh, a lot leaner in summer league. And mm -hmm. I think they love that young legs on the second unit. So to start the season, I think Evan will probably earn the starting job, but it's a competition. And if like mm -hmm. Evan is just not doing it, I mean, I could see Tom going with Quentin because he loves him so much. Then you have the question, do you just take Fournier out of the rotation? I mean, that's mm -hmm. tough to do. Uh, a veteran mm -hmm. player who can shoot the three. So, yes. uh, but yeah, the younger players, Thibodeau will play them as long as they continue to show out like they did mm -hmm. late last season. Thibodeau loved what quickly did late in the year with a couple of triple doubles. He loved what Obi brought uh, with the three point shot and the fast pace and giving energy to his teammates You know, I'm not a big fan of Obi and his dunks. I mean, that's for the fans. <laughs> it's two points. But when I see Obi, you know, when he does those dunks, it does light up the crowd and his teammates. So mm -hmm. Obi's going to get his minutes. You know, as if he's hitting that three-pointer, which he was, he'll get his minutes. And Miles McBride, that's a good question because they like him. It's just where do you put him? If Derek is healthy, Miles doesn't have a spot. And mm -hmm. I think that to save Derek, maybe Derek doesn't play the second night of back-to-backs and you put Miles McBride in there as the backup point guard. I could see uh, trying to save Derek a little more because you never know what you're going to get with his health. Uh, yes. But, uh, you know, they like him. And, you know, the other young players, Jericho Sims, That's a little dicey because now you got Isaiah Hardenstein who's going to be healthy. He's a durable player. Mm -hmm. So how much room does Jericho have uh, in the rotation? You know, it's going to have to take an injury probably. You can read she. People talking so much about Ken Red. Uh, has a chance in this team or not? I mean, right now he's got a hope, not hope, but I think it's about if there's an injury to a player, Listen, if Obi didn't play so well at the end of the season, maybe they could have looked at Cam as the backup four at power forward because the one reason they got him was they liked the versatility they could play that he could play the three and the four. But now it's almost like he's squeezed out of that position. You know, Thibodeau doesn't like to play 11 men. The only way Cam is going to get minutes unless there's an injury, injury is if, There's an 11-man rotation, unless they just take Evan out of the rotation, which would be a very bold move for a guy they're paying $78 million to. So, mm -hmm. But Cam has got to have a great camp, and then maybe they could trade him. As we wrote, you know, a, a source, a very good source said that Cam uh, would like a change of scenery. Uh, Mark, I, I remember now a Kikli, Kikli question. Carmelo Anthony, in your opinion, will go to the Celtics, in your opinion? With the Knicks, I don't believe, but the Celtics uh, or Miami Heat, what do you think? Uh, sorry, I remember this question. I, yeah, yeah. I really, really need to well, make. Well, before, I mean, I went on a 10-week leave. I had written about how the Knicks had had internal 
talks about Carmelo. Obviously, Leon Rose is his former agent. Carmelo would love to be in New York. Right now, I think if they made that Donovan trade and gave up a lot of assets, a lot of their players, like it was a three-for-one trade, there would be more roster spots open for him, and it would have made sense. But right now, the, the rotation is packed, so it's it it would tough it would be tough for Carmelo to establish a spot. I mean, if there's another trade down the road where a roster opening occurs, uh, maybe. But I think he's Carmelo is even better off uh, going somewhere else like Miami. Miami didn't make a move. Miami mm-hmm. didn't do a thing in the off season. That would be a nice little juice off the bench and he loves Miami. So uh, I think that could make sense, but Carmelo would love a farewell tour here in New York. Even if I wrote as a mentor to guys like yes. Obi and Julius, someone who's been around forever. And I think even if Ju- if Carmelo was on the roster last year and in that role, like maybe he could have talked to Julius talk Julius off the ledge, so to speak. But yeah, yes. I think Carmelo, unless the Knicks make another trade to open up a roster spot, uh, I'm not sure that Carmelo is the greatest fit right this moment. And the NBA start, start, start. I miss the NBA, Mark Berm. I miss so much. Yeah. Knicks playing. I miss so much, man. <laughs> what, what about soccer? Ah, soccer, World Cup this year, World Cup yeah, this year, Neymar. <laughs> yeah, I figure that is also a big thing for you. Yes. But, uh, no, it's great. I mean, Brazil, it's a it's a place where, you know, basketball is obviously not uh, the number one sport, but it really yes. feels like there ha- there is a, a nice uh, fan base, uh, considering there's no, I mean, there's a, a league there, right, a professional league. But, yes. you know, it, it's great to see that the NBA has even attracted a lot of fans in Brazil. In Brazil, so many people uh, grow up, grow up the, the interest in, about the NBA in Brazil. Uh, grow yeah. up so much, so much. Uh, people like so much NBA in Brazil. And uh, I am a Nick fan since 92, Berman. 92. Wow. I, I, I love this team. I love this team. And... Uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick's, uh, Nick's uh, hurt me, but I love the love. The love, love, man, the love. It's, whether it's Brazil or Manhattan or Westchester, the Knicks fans, they take <laughs> so much pain following this team. There's been so many losing seasons, especially in the last 21 years, and they still come into the season as excited and enthusiastic as ever. I'm yes. amazed at fans not ever losing hope. It's, it's, it's amazing <laughs> to see. You don't see that in other cities. There's a lot of bandwagon fans in places like Charlotte, even Memphis, New Orleans, Sacramento. I could go on and on, but I don't want to get in trouble in those cities. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Berman, uh, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Again, Again yeah. in this channel again. Thanks and, uh, so much. I for hope the, I always enjoy it. Yeah, I'm looking forward sure. to the subtitles. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks so much, right. Berman. All Take right. care. Adios, Victor. Thanks so much. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês. Apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? vídeos e etc sempre ditos antes para os membros uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo que vão ser exclusivos para vocês além de sorteios galera quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem galera então bora lá participa e apoia o canal Nick fez Brasil pessoal
beleza? <música> E aí pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue?